Okay, so here's a blow-by-blow blow account of how you can do your first basic mandala rock painting. I've, I'm showing you here three tools that I started out with. Um, my most essential was this kebab stick. It's got a pointy end and a flatter end. I used that for most things and kind of spread it out a little bit for slightly bigger dots from either of those two sizes. Um, I also found a paintbrush that I liked which had reasonably flat end. It was a little bit bigger than the end of the kebab stick. And also I bought a pack of these pencils, really cheap, just with the eraser on the end there. And that was quite good for a larger dot. So that's what I started out with. I then bought a set of these nail art tools, which you can see range from very tiny dots through to bigger dots. I think that's the biggest, biggest one there. So that was pretty much what I started out with originally for my early rock painting days. I then managed to find online a set of these tools here, which are especially for um, DIY mandala stones. And she has her own website. She's Canada based. I had them sent out to New Zealand. So I'm going to show you how to paint a basic mandala rock. Uh, there's no set formula. Uh, you can find online some set formulas, yes, but they pretty much can evolve however you wish, so I'll show you how that works. Here's a few rocks that I've already painted a base coat of black on. You can paint it any colour you like. Um, I find today I'm going to be doing bright colours, so I find black is great with bright colours. I think I'm going to choose this little guy here for um, the example to show you today. So I'll move these other two out of the way. I've already got over here some paint colours that I've selected. Um, I won't be minimizing um, or sorry limiting myself to just those colors but I thought I'd get them out ready to get started so I'm gonna this is my tin of uh, sealer paint that I use I'm gonna put that on top of there just to keep this in view for you here's my rock so I'm going to start out, let's turn it around a bit to catch the light a bit better. I'm going to start out with my centre colour. White's a pretty good colour to put in the middle. Start with a big dot. Um, because this is a smallish rock, I'm not going to make it a hugely big dot, but compared to your average size dot, I guess pretty big. Again, as I say, you can't really go wrong. So don't, don't feel afraid to just try a few things. Um, I'm putting the paint on here. One big dot in the middle. So that's done. Now, around your center dot, your larger dot, you want to do some smaller dots. So again, pick your next color. And you've decided your color theme that you want. So don't be dictated by what I'm doing. But if you want to follow exactly, then go for your life. I'm going to choose this limey green color next. And this time I'm going to choose quite a small dot. In fact, I'm going to choose my smallest dot, which is that one there. And... You just need to start by doing a top and a bottom or I think depending on the way you're looking at this when I um, put it online it might be a bottom and a top and then a left and a right. If you get those four points in first it's easier to navigate the rest of the rock. So from there I'm going to put in one in the middle of each of those. See it developing there? 
And because I've choos chosen an especially small tool, I'm going to do another one in the centre of each of those. So there's quite a few second rows of dots there. That one there I didn't do properly the first time, so I just went back and did another little dab of paint on the top. You can see that I'm using the finger of my other hand. That is simply just to steady the painting hand. And if I just touch the end of the tool with that finger, it helps me to keep it steady. So, that's pretty even. The first time you do it, mark my words, it won't be as even as that. But it doesn't take long to get the hang of it. So, from this size dot, I'm going to take it up a notch and go a little bit bigger. So, this particular tool has um, a small dot number one there and a number two there. So, again, pick your colour. Um, let's go for this whiny red colour. Now, for the second row, I usually go in between, so you'll see for the first one, each dot has a slight gap, so I usually aim for in between those, bearing in mind that I don't really use those for my alignment. I still go top and then bottom, and then left and right first, because that's a lot more accurate than going right in between. But when you do your top and bottom, put the first two or three in between the little inlet there where it goes between the inner dots. And that will ensure you get your starting point correct. Now this time, I'm thinking maybe I'll do something different. Maybe I'll put a slightly bigger dot. This is what you can do. You can just go around again with this next size up, or you can do something different. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I'm going to go for a slightly bigger dot. And I'm going to put it in between. Just outset it a little bit so it's not as close as the others. See how that one's quite a bit bigger. I read somewhere there's no such thing as a mistake, just bigger dots. And I like that theory. So if you feel that it really doesn't look good, you just kind of work with it until it does. Cover it up with a bigger dot. So you can see there I made a slightly different pattern by using the bigger tool there. Now I'm going to go back to the size I had originally and just fill in those gaps between the two with a dot each side like that. So you can see a little bit of a pattern emerging. In fact this one looks almost like a diamond shape because I've done that bigger dot. So maybe we'll build on that, maybe we won't. There are no rules. But, you know, feel free to, to copy this one as I've done it, if you like. And when you get a bit more confident, you can start making things up as you go along. So we've got green, we've got red. What shall we do next? Um, because I'm doing brights, um, I kind of want a clashing colour. I'm thinking maybe about a yellow or a burnt orange. Maybe a burnt orange. What have we got? That one's suitably clashy, I think. So, I think I'm going to do 
that same bigger size that I used for the red there. And I'm going to go on top of that middle dot right there. When I say on top, I don't mean literally on top, I mean in line with, I think, is a better word. How I do it is I line up the center of that middle dot across, so I'm working exactly in a line from that one to the center to there. And that way it will always stay reasonably symmetrical. So just use your eye to line it up. There's no need to draw any patterns or lines on there first, although I think some people do put some um, lines, uh, draw them on with pencil and then paint over them. I'm always a little bit worried if I do that because how am I going to get the pencil off from in between? So I don't do that. Um, before I put the lid on, I'm just thinking, what shall I do? Yeah, I'm going to leave that for now. Choose my next colour. <clears throat> I might do some little circles around these. And how about we use the blue. I might go pale blue here, this colour. I'm going to go to that very, very small one I started out with, right in the centre, the green one. Um, but for the top of each of these um, orange dots, I'm going to put slightly bigger, so the same size that I used for the smaller red. Just going to put that there like that, on the top of each one. Now remember to line it up from the centre through there, and bung it there and that way you can keep your alignment your symmetry line it up I don't physically do that every time but it's just to show you how to get that symmetry going so there's my little dot now I'm going to flick this one over from number two to number one um, the tools you're using may not be numbered like I say I started out with that um, kebab stick so um, Sometimes to get a slightly bigger dot from the pointy end of the kebab stick, all I did was I made sure I put a lot of paint on and just kind of swizzled it around a little bit to spread it out. And then for the slightly smaller dots, I would leave it as it is. So I'm going to work my way around here. Um, one, two, three, four. You can see how it, as it gets less paint on it, it starts to be smaller and I'm double tapping on the first one just to get a bit more paint off there on that one and that gives you the effect of a slightly bigger dot to start and a smaller dot as you go around. Now I've seen a few that have been left just with these dots around one side like that to make a little spiral which is quite a nice effect. But we'll leave that for further down the road when we're, when we're trying different things. We're going to do the same thing around the other side to make it like a little circle of dots around that orange one. Like so. So that's really about all you need to know. And you can just keep working your way out from the centre in that manner, doing what you feel like until you cover the stone as much as you would like. So I'll leave that one there for now. I might finish it off later um, with a uh, one of my famous fast forward videos, which will show you what I do from here, sped up. Okay. Good luck with that. Let me know how you get on in the comments.